That is a brand new 2019 Mazda 3, and it is an absolutely incredible car with one major flaw. So this is a video I have been super excited to do, and this is a car I have been super excited to drive because, well, just look at it. It's one of the best looking new cars ever. I think the front is gorgeous, the back is incredible, and the side profile is just perfect. There's a lot going on in this car, and in this video, we're gonna go over all the really cool stuff from the front to the back, talk about the price, talk about what's good, and talk about what really isn't. And because this is the first ever Mazda 3 with all-wheel drive, we're gonna put it through its paces. That's right, that means a TFL slip test with this Mazda 3. Like many new cars, this Mazda has a pretty bold and in-your-face grille. But unlike many new cars, it doesn't look out of place. It's well sculpted into the front of the car, and it looks to be just about the right size actually. Now what's interesting is that it's this cool mesh grill and you'll notice there are certain parts of the grill that are actually filled in and there's even certain blocks in the grill that are filled in as well. But my favorite part on the exterior design are the headlights. You've got these really cool running lights that surround the main beams. It's just a brilliant design and it's actually pretty functional as well because check out this front chin spoiler. Usually on these performance cars they hang down low like it does on this car and they look like they're ready to scrape on absolutely everything. And that may be true, but what Mazda's done is they've made it out of plastic and it's now separate from the bumper itself. So if you end up running this into a curb or you want to replace it, you don't have to go through the whole front end and really redo a lot of the paint and stuff. You may have noticed three little letters on the back of this Mazda that make it exceptionally special. AWD. That's right, this car is all-wheel drive and here at TFL we like to see how well those all-wheel drive systems work by getting the car stuck on purpose in these rollers. This is a length of conveyor belt rollers essentially and we put them under different wheels to see if we can get it stuck and see if we can get the all-wheel drive system to get us unstuck. It's pretty simple. For this first test, I'm gonna put one under the left front and one under the right front. So we're gonna get the front wheel stuck and see if we can use the all-wheel drive system to engage the rear wheels to get us unstuck. All right, here is our procedure. So, all right, first back onto the rollers. And then I put the car in neutral and let it settle. Now this car has a bunch of components in its all-wheel drive system. There's a power takeoff in the front, there's a drive shaft, and then there's an electronic all-wheel drive coupler that can distribute torque where it needs to go. So into drive, front wheel slip test, just normal mode, so traction control on, and then you'll see a piece of tape on the front wheel. This is a new thing we're trying to let you know where the wheel is at all times and how it's spinning. And then in the drive, foot off the brake, and just a little bit of gas. we're off. So not much of a challenge there for the three. Next up is the diagonal slip test. So roller front left, roller rear right. So this would be like if you're stuck in some snow and opposite ends have traction. This is a really good test of the traction control system to see how long it takes to get us unstuck. Front left, rear right are going to be stuck on this one. So same thing, back it on into neutral, let the car settle, then into drive, foot off the brake, a little bit of throttle, and it pulled us off fairly easily, but a little bit more slipping than I'd ultimately like. Coming inside the new Mazda 3, well, the design is also pretty brilliant, and there's a lot of really cool touches. One of my favorite is right here. Now you've got this classic kind of chrome trim that runs down the side of the door. It doesn't look like much until you realize that the door handle is so elegantly built into this one continuous form. BMW, Audi, Mercedes, the premium brands have been spending a lot of time and money crafting their speaker covers. And Mazda has done the same thing in this three. In this premium package, we have Bose audio, which is cool. And you'll see how neatly done the speaker cover is. It's this brushed look. You'll also see the unlock and lock button is incorporated into it nice and elegantly. There's only so many things you can do from a design standpoint on a hatchback. I mean, there was a period there where all hatchbacks looked pretty much exactly the same. 
But Mazda has done some really special things with this new 3 that really separate it from its competition. First of all, check out this lower side sill. It's also made of plastic, but it really emphasizes the length of the vehicle and makes it look especially aggressive. But the best part of the design from the side is right here. It's this rear sloping rear end. So many hatchbacks, they kind of go and then they go straight down. This looks like a sports coupe almost. Actually, it looks like probably the best looking hatchback of all time, the Alfa Romeo Brera. That's right, I said it. I think this Mazda 3 is probably the best in terms of design of any of its competition. I will say that the back seat suffers a little bit for this brilliant rear end design too. Getting in it is a, well, you gotta really lower yourself and then kind of duck a little bit. But once you're back here, it's not so bad. I'm six foot one, this is my driving position and the rear seat is scalloped, so I actually do have some rear leg room. Um, headroom is, it's not so bad either. It's just the whole getting in and out thing that's, that's, that's the hard part because maybe if I do like a, like a limbo, yeah, that's how you do it. So you get out of a Mazda 3 from the back seat. Um, pretty usable though if you have kids or someone smaller than, than I am. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's a compact car. It's never going to be huge. I really do like what Mazda has done with this gauge cluster and they actually took a page out of the Lexus handbook here because they've incorporated both analog and digital gauges into one. So on the left, you have an old school analog tachometer. Love that. On the right, old school analog fuel gauge and temp gauge. Perfect. And in the middle, you have an old school analog bezel, but a digital speedometer. So you get this cool mix of analog and digital. Now, the other kind of funny thing is it's configurable, but not all that configurable. You have an MPG gauge on the left, for example, and on the right, you can configure your range and an additional fuel gauge. So you can have both a digital and an analog fuel gauge if you want. But what's weird is that I'm looking at it right now, and I'm not sure the digital and analog fuel gauge show the same level. The digital one does show range, which is cool, but it looks like the level themselves are, are pretty different. In the back here, we've got this spoiler. Looks great, pretty sporty, but it's actually made out of like a piano black plastic. And I have a feeling it's gonna scratch super easily when you're washing it. The color, brilliant color, poly metal gray mica. It's got my last name in it. And you'll notice these tail lights. Once again, they match the fronts super well. You've got these round signatures, and then you've got four little dots for the turn signal and the reverse lights. One issue with this rear end, well, the space is a little bit compromised because of this sloping roof line. Pop it open, and yeah, it's a pretty decent trunk space horizontally and front to back, but you definitely do lose some total cargo volume because of that slope. This is pretty neat back here. Now, I don't have a power lift gate. Doesn't really matter because it's such a small light car, but you do have this little button with a lock symbol on it. And what I can do is if I have the proximity key in my pocket, I can push this lock button, close it, and then the car locks itself. I can walk away and I don't have to go around the side and push the button or push it on the key fob. The new Mazda 3 has a revised infotainment system and it's better than the old one because the old one was, <sighs> yeah but it still isn't brilliant. Now, what's good about it is there's a bunch of shortcuts on this very BMW iDrive-esque system, this little joystick knob, but there are some parts that are still a little bit confusing. For example, to tune the radio, I have to go into entertainment, and then I have to push down for menu, then I have to scroll to channel list, then I have to select the channel with the knob and then I got to click down on the channel. There's a lot of steps involved to do what seems like a very simple thing. Now the navigation screen is also very wide and long and you notice that about this Mazda system is it's pretty big. It's an 8.8 .8 inch screen diagonally but it's also pretty flat. One annoying part is when I put the car in reverse the backup camera only takes up maybe two-thirds of the screen. It'd be really cool if it was wide angle and took up the entire screen. Another page out of the Audi handbook is the position of the volume knob. So rather than having it up here in the dashboard, it's down here on the center console and it's also a joystick now. So you can push down on it to turn the radio on and off and you can also move it left and right to advance tracks. Now it's time for the hardest of the slip tests, the three wheel slip test. Both front and the rear left are gonna be stuck. And I know our guy, Dave Coleman, by the way, even if you're not a Mazda guy, you should like Dave Coleman because he's just an honest to God, hardworking car guy. 
But this all-wheel drive system he put together is super sophisticated. It can tell when the steering gets light, letting it know you're in snow. It engages and disengages at so many different times. This is basically the brute force version of testing all-wheel drive, like if you're stuck in a snowbank. But let's see if that right rear wheel can pull us off this really tricky test. Okay, here we go, three wheel slip test. Now this is a super hard test, I'm not gonna, not gonna lie to you guys. And there's probably a good chance we're not gonna make it off, but that's okay, because this isn't a Wrangler, this is a Mazda 3. This is kind of the ultimate test to see how it does. So, same thing, into the rollers, into neutral, let it settle. Now I am on a little bit of a hill here, just a slight incline into drive, let's see what happens. Oh, it's really working it. Let me go ahead and try turning traction control off, see if that helps. Oh, come on. It's, it's hopping, but we're still a little bit stuck. That wasn't a great result on our three-wheeled slip test with the rear wheel, but we're gonna try the same thing, except now the front right wheel is gonna have traction. But first, I have to back it down. Um, so that means I gotta do this. And I gotta be super careful because the car is pretty low. Okay, that should do the trick. Now I just gotta back it down really slow. Wow, I can't even back off. But the belt line makes it hard to, hard to see things. I think I'm gonna have to get some help. That'll do. Oh yes, sweet, thanks guys. So here's what I'm thinking, because it's a front wheel drive bias system, I'm hoping if we give the front wheel a little bit of traction instead of one of the rears, we can get off the three wheel test. So just super slow onto the rollers. Now this is a six speed automatic, which is good for this kind of stuff. We're not gonna be burning out a dual clutch, but off the brake, traction control on. Way easier, look at that. A pretty impressive result with the Mazda now. On both two wheel slip test, it did really great. On the three wheel slip test, we couldn't get unstuck with just the rear wheel. And I think that's because it is definitely a front wheel drive bias system. It just doesn't have the distribution to get us unstuck in that situation. But once we took the three wheel slip test and put it on the front, pulled off no issue. Like many new cars, this Mazda 3 has a power driver but not a power passenger seat. Not such a big deal. What is a big deal is the memory seat that they incorporated into this driver's seat. Now there are two memory settings and they're not actually on the door like you find in most cars. They're actually down here on the dashboard. What I love about this Mazda interior and this whole car in general is that it feels so sporty. Everything is angled toward the driver. Everything just hugs you so well. And the steering wheel is great, actually. Probably one of the best in the business. Thin spoked, small airbag, not too thick, not too thin, very smooth. Having said that, the paddle shifters are straight out of a Nintendo Game Boy. They're kind of chintzy and just, they don't really make you want to use them, if you know what I mean. Which is a shame because the rest of the car screams, let's go fast, let's go have fun in the canyons, and then you get these kind of flimsy paddle shifters. I think it's fair to say Mazda did a killer job on the interior of the new 3. It looks like it was designed from one coherent thought. One thing that is a little funky though is the passenger side vents. Now, once again, they're really well incorporated into the dashboard, but they're only like, maybe five, six inches apart. And usually when you have vents on the inside, on the passenger, you have one in the middle, you have one on the far right, so you have two streams of air. With this design, they're both pretty much shooting out from the same place. There is a little bit of funkiness going on here with the center armrest. Now it slides forward and backwards, which is a little funky because it sits perfectly in the forward position and it meets the rest of the console, so it looks correct. But what is weird is you can't actually open it from the forward position, which is how you'd expect it to open. Instead, you gotta go all the way back and then you can open it. But once it's open, it hides something that I think is it's kind of a mixed bag of great and terrible because it hides the wireless phone charging. What's great about it is because it's such a big cubby, I can take my phone, which is the big iPhone A plus, stick it in there and it'll charge. Uh, a lot of cars, they hide them up front here and there's not enough room to charge the larger phones. What's not so great about it is if you wanna store odds and ends like a lot of people do in these center armrests, 
then they're going to roll around and you're not going to be able to use your wireless charger. So I'm kind of on the fence about this whole system. Now for one of my least favorite parts of the Mazda 3, and that is this proximity key. Now from this distance, it looks great. Looks like it's covered in leather with a really high quality aluminum surround. But as you start getting closer, you quickly realize that this key is no bueno. It's just this horrible chintzy plastic and the buttons don't feel very good and the rest of the interior is so premium but this key feels like it should be out of a McDonald's kitty meal. All right, here we go in the 2019 Mazda 3. Looks like an Elf Romeo. Let's see if it goes like one. Floored. No, it doesn't. Not all that quick if I'm being honest, nor does it sound all that good. What is good is the guy who did the engineering behind this car. His name is Dave Coleman. He's one of the lead chassis engineers for Mazda. And Dave Coleman could make a wheelbarrow handle like a Mazda Miata, which makes sense because he did the chassis dynamics behind the Mazda Miata. And he's an absolute wizard. So on the road, this car drives incredibly well. The steering is super tight. The suspension is neither too firm nor too soft. The all-wheel drive system feels dialed in. It's just a brilliant place to drive down the road in. It's just not, not a great place to listen to the engine or a great place to go all that quick. Now one area where maybe the Mazda is missing a slight opportunity is in the sport mode. What's cool about the Lexus digital displays is that when you put them in sport, they really become more active. They turn red, they look sporty. Sidebar, for some reason our videographer Alex hates red. Don't understand it, but red is a brilliant color. The interior of this car is red, which is awesome. But anyways, red is a good color for sportiness, but when you push the sport button on the Mazda 3, Nothing in this cool digital instrumentation changes. You just get a little tiny sport light at the bottom. Twenty nineteen Mazda three looks like an Alfa Romeo has an interior arguably better than that of a new BMW, and the engine. Well, the engine feels like it's straight out of a Mazda from several years ago. And that's because this engine is straight out of a Mazda from several years ago. This is the 2.5 liter Skyactiv G, 186 horsepower, 186 pound-feet of torque, um, no turbocharging, no supercharging, just a standard four-cylinder. And this is probably the biggest letdown of the whole vehicle because it's a fine engine. It goes down the road. It's made it to a great transmission. That's made it to a great and awesome all-wheel drive system. But the car is just asking for more. I am just asking for more. It just, I, I, I really need, I really want that 2.5 liter turbo from the CX-9 and from the Mazda 6 and the Mazda CX-5. It would look so good underneath this hood. Now rumor has it that Mazda is thinking about putting the Skyactiv X engine in this later this year, the more advanced naturally aspirated four cylinder. But even still, this car deserves to have a performance variant. This Mazda 3 comes equipped with all the modern and advanced safety tech that you'd expect. So emergency braking, it's got adaptive cruise control, it's got blind spot monitoring. It also has one feature I have never seen in any other car ever before. It's actually a feature you can disable in the uh, menu here, but if you push both the gas and the brake at the same time, it yells at you to let you know that you have both the brake and the gas pressed at the same time. Um, and it gives you a nice little chime like, what the heck are you doing? What do you want to do, accelerate or slow down? So that's pretty funny. It also has a button here in the dash that allows you to disable or enable the safety tech. That looks exactly, and I don't mean a little bit the same, but exactly like the one in the BMWs. This Mazda, of course, has that feature that'll correct you if you start drifting out of your lane. The steering wheel it will intervene and bring you back in. What I haven't seen before though is that it'll actually show you which way it's corrected. So it's got a little thing on the dash that'll show you, hey, I had to turn the wheel left. What are you doing? Stay in your lane. Let's see if I can demonstrate that now. There it goes. It gets mad at you. Stay right, you idiot. So 2019 Mazda 3 looks great. Drives even better. Interior is brilliant. Infotainment system is, is, is there. It's pretty good. Um, $31,335 for the one you see behind us, pretty much fully loaded. It's a great vehicle. I love that it's all wheel drive, especially being here in Colorado. I love the way it looks, I love the way it feels, but I just really wish it had more oomph. I really wish it had that 2.5 liter turbo. Mazda, I'm sure you know this already. I'm sure you're sick of people telling you this, but 
you know what you need to do. As always, I'm Tommy with the Fastlane Car. Go back to tflcar.com for the latest and greatest in Mazda 3 reviews.